Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be integrating dx over x cubed plus 1. So, we have a rational expression, we're going to write it as 1 over x cubed plus 1, and we're going to be using partial fractions here. But first of all, let's go ahead and factor the denominator. Since it's a sum of two cubes, we can just go ahead and write it as x plus 1 multiplied by x squared minus x plus 1 right? Okay, let's just make a nicer fraction bar here, maybe something like this. Okay, now what I'd like to do is, I would like to separate these, of course, into two fractions, write it as a sum of two fractions, but we have to pay attention to the factors in the denominator. We have a linear factor and a quadratic factor, and the quadratic factor, as you already know, hopefully, it's not factorable. It's actually an equation, if you set it equal to zero, uh, with no real solutions is discriminant is less than zero. So we're not going to factor it then, we're just going to leave it as is and write this expression as, so let me go ahead and write it as a over x plus 1, because for partial fractions, if you have a linear expression at the bottom, you have a constant at on top. So they kind of have to have a difference of uh, 1 in degree. And since you have a re reducible quadratic at the bottom, your numerator is supposed to be linear. So we're going to write it as bx plus c. And then by setting the coefficients equal to each other, you know, we're going to find the value of a, b, and c. So let's go ahead and make a common denominator and then just forget about the denominators because once we make a common denominator for these two fractions, then we don't have to worry about it. So a will be multiplied by x squared minus x plus 1 and bx plus c will be multiplied by x plus 1 and this is supposed to equal 1 because that's the numerator that comes from here. Okay? Now, we're going to be finding the values of a, b, and c here because these are two polynomials that are always equal for all values of x. This is true. So let's go ahead and distribute. This gives me ax squared minus ax plus a plus, if you distribute the bx, squared plus bx plus cx plus c and the whole thing is equal to 1. Let's go ahead and combine like terms. We get a plus b quantity squared, I mean quant a plus b quantity times x squared, so these two terms, and then we have the x terms, b plus c minus a, we can write it that way, b plus c minus a times the quantity x, and then we have our constants here, a plus c. Now since both sides are equal to each other, as polynomials for all values of x, that means we have the following. So we can safely say that there is no x squared on the right hand side, so the coefficient of x squared is supposed to be 0, the coefficient of x is supposed to be 0 because there is no x on the right hand side, and the constant term needs to equal 1. So this gives us a system of equations, let's go ahead and write it down and solve it. a plus b is equal to 0, b plus c can be written as a because their difference is 0, and a plus c is equal to 1. Now how do you solve the system? Well from the first one I'm getting b equals negative a and then if I replace b with negative a here then I'm getting negative a plus c is equal to a. If I add a to both sides I get c equals 2a. So I'm getting two relationships here that I can use. Is If you plug in, if you replace c with 2a here then you get 3a is equal to 1 which means a is equal to 1 third and then b is the opposite of a, which is negative one-third, and c is two times a, which is two-thirds. So this gives us our coefficients, basically, right? So these are the coefficients that we're going to use in our expression. So by using those values, we're just going to separate this into two fractions, and then we're going to go ahead and factor it. Now, the way to do it is, since our integral had the a over x plus 1, and then bx plus c in the numerator of the other one, we can basically take out a one-third, which will make things easier. So if you pull out the one-third all the way on the outside, you can write it. And then we get 1 over x plus 1, and then plus negative x plus 2 over x squared minus x plus 1. And then the whole thing will be multiplied by dx, of course. So notice that we our b value is negative 1, that's why I wrote negative x here, but don't forget it's going to be multiplied by one-third on the outside. And the c was two-thirds, but I just took out one-third, so I can just replace this number with two. 
Okay, so this is our expression and how are we going to integrate this? Well, 1 over x plus 1 is fairly easy to integrate. It's just ln, right? What about the other one? Let's go ahead and focus on this one because the first part is fairly easy to integrate. I can just go ahead and write it down. 1 over x plus 1 dx is going to equal ln absolute value of x plus 1 plus c. Of course, you can put the constant at the end as well, but let's just write it for now. And at the end, I'm just going to use a single constant. Okay. The second part, let's go ahead and work on this expression a little bit. So we have negative x plus 2 divided by x squared minus x plus 1. So this is what I'd like to do. I'd like to get uh, the derivative of x squared minus x in the numerator if possible. And I think we can, we can do that. For example, I can just write it as, what's the derivative of x squared minus x plus 1? Let's go ahead and differentiate it first to see what it looks like. The derivative of this expression is going to be 2x minus 1. So wouldn't that be nice if I had a 2x minus 1? Then we can do that. So how, what we can do is we can basically multiply the top and the bottom by negative 2. And of course, the, the bottom one is just going to stay as a you know coefficient. But I'll distribute the top. That's going to give me 2x minus 4 over whatever we have at the bottom. Don't worry about it for now. But what we get from here is nice because at least we got the 2x. We didn't get 2x minus 1 like here, but we can easily adjust it because what we can do is we can write it as 2x minus 1 minus 3 and then all over negative 2 times x squared minus x plus 1. Okay, so that's my expression. What I'm going to do is I'll separate these two into two expressions. So write it as something like maybe negative 1 half multiplied by 2x minus 1 over x squared minus x plus 1, and then I should be getting something like plus 3 halves times 1 over x squared minus x plus 1. Okay, now so this is my expression, and what I'd like to do is I'd like to integrate this, obviously. Let's go ahead and integrate this expression, and if you do, you're going to get something nice. First of all, in order to be able to integrate this, what I'd like to do is I'll replace this with u, so u will be x squared minus x plus 1, and du would be 2x minus 1 dx. So I'll be getting this part with the dx, of course. So that's going to be my expression, and it's, it's integral. We can just go ahead and write it like this with the dx. That way it'll make more sense. And what this means is that I have, I'm getting from here, from the first one, from this one, I'm getting something like this, negative 1 half of integral integral du over u, which is going to be ln, of course. And then for the other part, we have to do a little bit of work here. And that this is what I'm going to do. I'll write it as 3 over 2, and then the integral of 1 over... Now, I can write this as, by completing the square, I can write it as x minus 1 half squared. That's going to give me a plus 1 fourth, so I do need a 3 fourths, and then just dx. So, we're going to integrate both of these, and we didn't need a u substitution here. Well, you can if you want, but I'm just going to use a formula. Hopefully, you don't mind that. But the first one is going to give me here negative 1 half of ln absolute value of u, and then I can just write it as what it is. Now, for the second one, if you allow me to do that, I'm just going to use a formula for this one. But here's the idea. If you wanted to integrate this without using a formula, you'd basically do the following. You're going to replace this expression with square root of 3 over 2, tangent alpha, and then from here, you're going to find dx, and then, of course, the tangent squared plus 1 is secant squared, and then from the top, you get secant squared, so on and so forth. In other words, this is like an inverse tangent integral type of, so you can easily verify that, very easy, but I'm just going to skip that part because uh, I'd like to keep it short for this video, and let me go ahead and write this down as, so this is going to give us square root of 3 times tan inverse and I will probably erase this part so to be able to write this. But yeah, that's the general idea. So you will be replacing this with uh, something tangent. Okay, that's the whole idea for this transformation or substitution, I guess. Trigonometric substitution, you can call that. So this is going to be square root of 3 times 10 inverse of 2x minus 1 divided by root 3. And you might be wondering where that comes from. If you make a common denominator here, you're going to get... 2x minus 1 divided by 2 quantity squared. That's where we get that 2x minus 1 from. Let's go ahead and, of course, let's not forget our constant c and replace u with x squared minus x plus 1 and finalize the answer. 
So the integral of, so the integral of dx over x cubed plus 1 is going to equal negative 1 half times the ln of u. u is x squared minus x plus 1. By the way, since this is always positive because it's a problem that doesn't intersect the x-axis, I don't need absolute value. Plus the square root of 3, actually I probably need to write it like this, more like this, square root of 3 times 10 inverse 2x minus 1 over root 3 plus c. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.